share with you guys. First off, if you haven't looked up uh, a little song called We Are Part of the 99, it was written, written by third graders in Albemarle County Schools. <laughs> and they wrote it themselves. Um, and that's what the school is saying. And is we don't censor them uh, for what they think or what they're saying. They did it. And if you haven't looked at the words, you really should. It's really cute. It's really awesome. You'll love it. Um, second off, uh, this isn't necessarily a proposal kind of stuff, but I would like for if anyone wants to uh, go to uh, D.C. on the 16th for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, we gather up our group and maybe rent a van. Um, I've got my Prius, so I can fit three people in there. And that's, you know, max. Um, but if we can, you know, caravan, you know, uh, make sure that everybody has enough gas money, things like that. I think that would really be a wise decision. So I will play point person on that. And um, here's my number. Don't put it in the minutes. And that's really the best way to get me other than Facebook. And I'm Harry Hancock again. All right, hi, everybody. I'm Chris. I just want to um, read something about a protest I'm trying to organize. Um, a group called Move to Amend, uh, several months ago, they proposed a nationwide event called Occupy the Courts on Friday, January the 20th, which would be the, the two-year anniversary of the infamous Citizens United ruling, which uh, basically gave uh, corporations personhood, personhood rights. Um, I, I totally support this group and their goals. Um, I just want to put a little twist on it um, because the I mean the Supreme Court already spoke on this and I mean so besides the amendment there's really nothing else the courts can really do about this issue so I wanted to to uh, have a protest here at the federal courthouse in Richmond on the same day but I want to have it be about the um, the recent National Defense Authorization Act um, which was just signed into law on New Year's Eve by President Obama. Um, and the aim of the protest would just be to educate the public about, about this act and uh, to demand that the courts declare this unjust law unconstitutional. Um, coverage of this law has largely been ignored by the media. Um, a lot of people really aren't even aware about this law. So um, I feel like a protest on a Friday afternoon on January 20th in front of the federal courthouse on Broad Street would be a great place to to um, just raise awareness about this law. Yeah. Um, I'll say my number, I don't want to miss either, but um, okay. Hi, um, I'm Laura, and um, my paper uh, that I submitted for a symposium in early March was accepted, um, and I'll be speaking and doing an artistic conference at Bedford Hills Correctional Facility in upstate New York. Um, and I want to, it's all about Occupy Richmond and um, creative ideas and theater outreach. And I really would love to put together a letter in support from Occupy Richmond to the women who are incarcerated. Um, so if you want to help me spearhead that letter, I would love that. Um, and if you want my number, just find me after the GA, please. Thank you. For those who are coming in, we're just in soapbox time, which is just totally open talking to the group, generally one to three minutes. Good evening, my name is Carol White. I'm the commander of the Richmond Guardian Angels, and this is Thomas Kopsky, as the um, assistant commander of the Guardian Angels. And first, let me just say, I truly applaud what you guys are doing. I really do. Um, well, and if I hear these guys get into some community service type things. And what we're going to be doing on June 2nd, we're having a cancer walk. And we would love to um, get your help with this. This is going to be something different than, than any than the city of Richmond has had, maybe the state of Virginia, maybe the United States. But this is not like a five mile walk or a ten mile walk to raise money. We're not trying to raise money. All we're doing is trying to raise awareness. And what we're going to do is make this a citywide event. We're going to be in different neighborhoods around the city, and we're going to have people going disseminating information on breast cancer, telling them where they can go if they need insurance to get free mammograms, telling them when they should get the 
how to do self-examinations, um, and, and things of that nature. So it's it's an awareness type thing. We're not trying to raise money. We're just trying to make people aware. And uh, we want this to be the first annual breast cancer walk. We're calling any time you have time to live. So it's time to live. Is what we're calling. And we would love to um, have your support on that. said, I want to uh, kind of reiterate that we really want this to be as large as possible. I uh, made two or three calls to my office and we talked to different people, but I talked to Ket. Okay, and Ket helped me uh, and asked me to come out here. And uh, we, we, we definitely want this walk to be the biggest walk they ever had in Richmond. A lot of people are walking and uh, generating money or whatever, but this is something we did in Baltimore because we have an alliance with the, with the God and Angels all over the country. And we did this in Baltimore, we went door to door and it was powerful and it was beautiful. We had uh, council survivors and we congratulated them and I think this will work for the city. So, you know, uh, y'all can help us out and get anybody out there, you know, then it would be a gift. We do have a few. People working with us already. We have Massey Cancer, uh, Massey Cancer Center that's working with us, Susan B. for the Cure, um, families of um, breast cancer survival, and some other people that we're working on. We're going to be meeting with the Virginia Cancer Society on January 10th. And uh, like I said, we really love your support. It's going to be June 2nd, but uh, of course we have to start planning now. And what was the official name? Time to live. Oh, okay. Cancer awareness work. And my number is um, 804-937-6836. Thank you. Thanks I'm actually going to D.C. On, on Wednesday for four days to go to Occupy D.C. And uh, if else wants to join me, the bus ticket was five, $5. The ticket for the way back was like 10 bucks. And I'm going to stay out there for four days. So if anyone wants to join me, just talk to me. Sapphire and Kaya, we're from Louisa County. Um, we came out, um, we, we got a message from a couple of people um, involved in Occupy Richmond about um, being concerned about the nuclear plant in Louisa County. Um, and we've been working on that um, we're with a group called Non on Fault Line that's done um, some protests and some organizing and media stuff. and. Um, we wanted to try to connect with people in Richmond about organizing against corporate control by Dominion power in general and also organizing around um, um, the issue of nuclear power and trying to get the, the unsafe North Anna plant shut down. Um, one, one of the things that uh, we're trying to... Uh, one of our... <coughs> Strategies right now that we're trying to do is to start a is a to start a potassium iodide petition. Um, potassium iodide is a medicine that, if you take it, it prevents thyroid cancer if you're exposed to radiation. Um, and there's laws that say that this should be distributed in the area of the plant, um, but they're, they're not even being followed. Um, and there's like American Thyroid Association says it should be distributed within a 50 mile radius, and it's not. Um, Richmond is right downwind, of, is directly downwind of the plan. So we want to try to work on this issue and just, we want to get the testing my to people, we also want to raise awareness about the dangers. Really, I think the important thing is, you know, the earthquake happened on August 23rd, and a lot of people don't realize, particular for folks who weren't there at the Lisa, like how detrimental this quake really was. 25 out of 27 
117 ton calves moved four inches at that plant that day. They've had two shutdowns since they've restarted. And <clears throat> we can't get our state legislators or the federal regulatory agency to be concerned about our safety because they don't care about our safety. They care about the cash that Dominion's handing them and that the nuclear industry is handing them. So really, the potassium iodide campaign certainly is for all of our safety. Uh, I don't know if y'all are aware, but you're within the 50 mile radius. That is the radius that they called an evacuation around Fukushima after the disaster. Anyway, you know, the potassium iodide is for our safety, but it's also to keep the fire and to keep people aware and not forgetting that this is a continual, ongoing safety hazard for us all. You know, the issue isn't so much the core reactors, it's the spent fuel that's at these reactors that's really the, the problem. They lose power, they can't keep those, those cooling ponds going, and, and we're all goners. <laughs> you know, so Dominion doesn't care, they don't care about our safety, and not beyond North Anna, they're also one of the biggest proponents of mountaintop removal, and, um, I think that they're a glaring example of the 1% controlling the rest of us. So anyway, I, I'm hoping, we are both hoping, that any of you all that might be interested in the campaign um, would talk to us and maybe network and help us spread out, get our voice louder on the issue. So. We don't have the petitions yet. Um, I hope we have it by the end of the week. The next General Assembly will come through and we'll have actual petitions and we want to try to get this going in Richmond and Charlottesville and Louisa and Fredericksburg everywhere. And, uh, and potassium iodide, one more thing about it, it's like they don't want they don't want people to have potassium iodide because having potassium iodide makes them think about the nuclear plant. And but that's why we want we want people to have it. Yeah. Uh, is there a, like a website or some kind of place where you can find out more about this? Um, our website is not on our fault line dot org. Oh, um, sorry. Okay. It's, it's okay, but um, we've been um, we're kind of gearing up again after a restart happened like a month and a half ago. We kind of were lost for what to do, and now that it's in the year, we're sort of getting started again with this campaign. So there's not that much up on it. I mean. You should definitely go there. But it has our contact cool. information there, so yeah. at the very minimum, you can be in dialogue with us. Um, we'll have the petition up. Within a week, we'll have the petition up on the site. Cool. So, and does everybody here know about the Virginia People's Assembly that's taking yes. place next Saturday? We'll be there as well. We are, our goal is to have the petition to circulate there. <coughs> okay. Okay. So the best way to contact you is not on our hotline. Yeah, or uh, not on our hotline at gmail. Though. Um, so we've, uh, we've kind of gotten to the 15 minutes uh, in the third box time, but I wanted to just real quickly ask that if there's anybody else that's new here for the first time, if you just want, you don't have to, but if you're willing and interested to stand up and introduce yourself really quick and give us a 20 or 30 second note about why you're here, that would be awesome. And uh, just to go around the room, we'll start here on this left side of the room. Anybody new? Um, I'm Edmund. And, and back here in this corner, anybody new? <laughs> we have explained to the book. Jill White from the Alliance of Party Nations, Richmond chapter here. We started in about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And of course, we were here to talk about the cancer. I'm Tom McCox, the assistant chairman of the Man of God of Angels in this Welcome. 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 Anybody else in this back corner that would like to stand up? I'm Mary Freeze. I've been watching you for, from the start. And I, I have a lot of things I have to do during the day, so this is the first time I've been here. Welcome. Welcome. I have a show up at City Council. Anybody else in this corner here? Um, I'm Tasha McKelvey. I've been, I've been observing for since the start of this and wanted to be involved, but was too busy with other things, so I'm happy to be here. 
Welcome. Yeah. Um, and as we're going back here, does anybody want to help me? I've got a couple of info packets to hand out. If you're willing to help pass these out, there's 30. And so there's more than 30 people here, so basically one, share with your neighbor, basically. And if you're just handing out to get them to neighbors. And then this is an infographic that goes over one of those. That'll, that there's really only, I didn't print out quite as many because it's a lot of a lot. So here's a couple to pass around here, some to pass around back in this way. There's a couple more floating around. Okay, anybody else in this corner? Sure. Anybody in the back who'd like to introduce themselves? Yeah, I'm Charles Rosenbaum with the Peace Education Center. I added the newsletter. Well, welcome. Anybody in back here? Anybody want to introduce themselves or over this way? First timers? One last call to somebody. If you're new and you'd like to introduce yourself, we're, we'd love to know you. Um, otherwise, we'll, I'm sure, find ways to get to know you throughout the process and in future days. But, um, all right. Okay, um, so here is our agenda for the day. We just finished up some soapbox, so we're going to roll right into the welcome. And then moving through work group announcements informal proposals and the agenda. And the agenda, there's one point that needs to be checked with you all, which is why it hasn't been written up yet. But I'm going to check with you all and then we'll get it done. Um, so, I'm, my name is Graham. I'm going to be the moderator for tonight. Uh, that means that I'm, my job is to essentially help the agenda move along smoothly, facilitate discussion. I've got a facilitation team up here with me, which includes Isaac, who's going to be taking notes of the minutes from the meeting, Bentley, who's going to be doing stack, which is, uh, so her job, stack, at certain points, you know, people want to discuss things, and we'll call for a stack of five people, and then the two stack keepers will call out people to then get them in, you know, in stack to speak, essentially. And, um, and our other staff person is Chris, who is not here at this moment, but will be here momentarily. Um, and then, you want to take, take staff uh, while they get to work? Perfect. And then, uh, Sir, who I think is downstairs, is our temp check person. And temp check's job is to make sure that everybody's happy, basically, and to check in with the group and the crowd and you know, make sure that people are feeling comfortable and have a chance to speak. Um, they'll check in with you at any point feel like you need to get in touch with the, the temp check person, there's the opportunity to do that. Um, and then Greg, Greg, Greg is going to be taking time. For most points, um, there's about three minutes of time to speak on any subject, sometimes it's two. Uh, and sometimes we motion to have it be more or less or that kind of thing. Um, one thing that we're doing new today that I'd love all of your help with is back there on the piano, is a vase and a bunch of small slips of paper and some pens and things. And as you're leaving, if you could write down on the top of the number a number from one to five that represents how well you think the facilitation, and especially me, did. In fact, since it's the first time, just make it me. Um, and I haven't really gotten the agreement from everybody on this one. So just the top number, if you could say one to five, how you thought I did as a facilitator. And secondly, just draw a line under that one to five, how you thought the meeting was. How the meeting went in general. And then if you have any notes, you, you can scribble a little bit on there. And we'll use that to continually improve our process. Um, looks like there's a clarifying question. What, what is best? One or five? Five is the best in this case. Um, and, okay, so uh, other things. We talked about stacks and five. Um, let's see here. We're, this is going to be a fairly long meeting because this is the first meeting of the year. And it's actually a, a strategy building meeting. Um, so I hope everybody's up for staying. We could, you know, like, our timeline is really to go until 8.30 or a little beyond. If we move through things quickly, we can certainly cut that down. But I want to set the expectation clearly so that is aware that the intention of this meeting is to be a long meeting. That said, we've got a strong goal as facilitation for, for 2012 to keep these general assemblies generally to an hour and a half long. And we're going to be really diligent about starting on time. 
um, which is we did a good job of that today. Um, so plan to start on time and have relatively short GAs in the future. But because this is such a critical meeting and we spent three weeks without GA, this is going to be a longer GA than normal and I wanted you all to be aware. Um, and clarify the question? Uh, I'd like to say something about the copies. We've run out, for those of you all that are together as a pair, would you release your second copy so that we can get some copies over on this side, please? Thank you. Uh, Great. Thank you. I did okay. sort of the same thing, so if anyone's got some spares over here that we can give over here. And we'll be going over those documents as we get a little bit further into like voting sections, but if you have the opportunity to read through them as we're here, I think they'll be really helpful to our process as we get into the actual strategy. Sure. Um, so not everybody, I, I think not everybody was not was, didn't introduce themselves, which is perfectly fine, but we get a show of hands of how many people are new here tonight. So we've got like 10 new people, which is really great. Thank you all so much. yourself, you're welcome to do so now. Um, so we'll go over our hand signals really quick for all the new people especially. Um, twinkling hands in the air, like this, means that I agree with what we're talking about. Down means I'm not really into what we're talking about. And then this guy in the middle is kind of on the fence, but for the purpose of what we're doing consensus-wise, we kind of want to like consider looking at that a little bit differently. Because this can mean I'm on the fence, but if you're voting, it usually means I don't really, I'm not really into it, but I'm not going to vote against it. So if you like it, do this. If you don't have any feelings on it whatsoever, just don't even vote. And if you're kind of trying to say, this, I don't like everything in this, but because I want this process to move forward and I believe in consensus, I'm not going to vote it down. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, this is a clarifying question. It's in use if you specifically have a question about what's being spoken about, and then we address that. This is a point of information, which is used in response specifically to a clarifying question, not to insert an opinion or anything. This is a point of process, which means that we're not on track, something is wrong with the process, um, we're not talking about what we, what we said we were going to talk, be talking about, that kind of thing. Uh, we're not adhering to the process that we've agreed upon. And then we address that point of process and we can come back to process, hopefully. Um, this means speak up. And if sometimes people can't hear us, we use mic check. Mic check. Mic, mic check. check. Mic check. Mic, mic check. check. One thing we're going to do. One thing we're going to do. do. This meeting. In this this meeting, meeting. We haven't done as much before. That we haven't, we haven't done, done as much before. before. Since we came to this meeting house. Since we came to this meeting house. Use mic check. Use mic, mic check. check. A lot of people miss mic check. A lot, a lot of people, people miss mic check. check. Because it really means that we're listening well to each other. Because it really means that we're listening well to each other. And it, it can take a long time. And it can take a long time. But sometimes investing time. But sometimes investing time. Actually cuts the, long, the time long term. Actually cuts the time long term. And so. Um, we don't have to use mic check anywhere at that particular point, but um, in certain points, I think we're gonna we're gonna try using that as a facilitation tactic, even though we probably can hear each other fairly well. Um, let's see here. Am I missing any other hand signals? Block. Um, if you absolutely will leave, leave the movement, if the proposal we're talking about or whatever we're talking about uh, continues forward, you can block. Uh, we we address blocks immediately. And, uh, and, then, and then we address those, and then we, and we hopefully find a way to work it out. Um, it's a very serious answer, a very serious meaning. Um, this means, let's move it along. The conversation is, we're, we're spending too much time on this particular subject. We ask that we be very respectful in the use of this. It can be used, it can feel really uncomfortable if you're standing up in the front and speaking about something, and people are telling you to move along. I would encourage that sig that signal to be used more in direction towards someone like me, like <coughs> talking too long about things, using facilitation. Um, but that is what that means. And this is Mayday, and it means I'm freaking out here. Uh, can I get temp checks help? Um, I'm freaking out. Uh, it's not like quite a block, but you're like really frustrated. You're kind of freaking out. And temp check will go directly to you. Is sir in the room? Okay, sir, can you stand up? Yeah. Sir is our temp check person. 
So mayday towards him if uh, if you need need that. Anything else on, on hand signals? Missing anything? This is a point of oh, that is a clarifying question. Well, I I have a clarifying question. It's not about hand signals. I just wanted to make sure that uh, the the notes from this meeting are going to be posted on the uh, Occupy RVA website. Afterwards. Yes. They, they will okay. be filmed as well. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, let's see here. Another thing that I want to say for facilitating this meeting, because it will be a long meeting, because there's some really important things to talk about, I'm going to take a facilitation style that's fairly hard, which means that I'm not going to be afraid to cut people off, and I'm setting that expectation clearly. So if I cut you off, please don't take it personally. We're really just trying to move this meeting along. There are other moments when it makes sense to be a little softer in our facilitation, but in respect of all of your time, I'm going to try and take that approach facilitation-wise. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Is anybody not okay with that? Clarifying question? Uh, moderator Evans, are, are you simply saying that this new approach is to maintain the continuity of our process to make sure things go smoothly? That is the intention. And Thank you, sir. Spe and, and very specifically, an intention <laughs> for this particular meeting. Um, Let's see here. Um, a couple of things that we like to really emphasize here is wait. Why am I talking? Um, so this idea of before we speak, anytime I speak, and I do apologize that the way this process works, I'm taking a lot of your time right now uh, at this particular juncture. Um, but when we speak, we're literally taking the time of, in this case, 70 or so people, which is a lot of time for every minute. We're taking over an hour of time. So it's really valuable to spend some really good time thinking about why do I want to speak? Do I have something really clear that I have formed to say? And then once I do have something clear, speaking it. And then um, wait goes really well, it pairs with the 80-20 rule, which is that generally when we're in a meeting of this kind, we want to spend 80% of the time listening very intentionally, and maybe 20% of the time thinking about speaking. But 20% of the time thinking about speaking doesn't necessarily mean we will speak 20% of the time. That would be actually a lot of time. Um, and it's generally good to assume competency and, um, and good intention on the part of everybody who's in a room. We're all here to support each other and get some really good stuff done. And um, anything else that I'm missing with that stuff? Step up, step um, Yeah, step up, step back. So one of the things we also use is we use a, a, um, a What's the term? Uh, something like that. Progressive stack, excuse me, which, which generally we want to make sure that new voices get a chance to speak, um, perhaps sometimes more or more easily than people who've been here a lot and get the opportunity to speak uh, quite often. And also, traditionally marginalized voices get the opportunity to speak um, because sometimes if you're in a very privileged role like I am, it's really easy to speak you know, in front of large groups. And um, we assume we've got the power to do that kind of thing. So we, we try and exercise those things, and that's things that the staff keepers will, will try to employ. Great. Um, uh, I was going to say one more thing for staff. Uh, me and Chris will be doing it. If you want to say something, please raise your hand and make eye contact with us, and we'll give you a number sign <coughs> so that you'll know where you are on staff. Great. <coughs> um, let's see here. I think, I think that's what we got. Um, so that was most of our welcome here. Any final clarifying questions about that kind of stuff? Is uh, the stack limited five? Yes. We're maintaining a stack of five. If a five people speaking on the subject is not enough to really get to the heart of what's going on, there can be a motion to extend stack, in which case we'll open another stack of five. But also keep in mind that we're again trying to move really quickly through things. So we may end up tabling things that clearly there's a lot of controversy about, and then those things can go back to percolating and working through smaller groups of people um, outside of GA, so that when it comes back to GA, we have a better sense <laughs> of what we really feel about something, and then try to, to vote it for it. So, any other clarifying questions? Um, I, I really hope that this meeting can be fun. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of great faces. I'm so excited to see everybody. And I'm going to try and make it relatively fun. I hope that we can all understand that we're trying to get a lot done, but also keep this thing moving so that we're not bored and we're not frustrated, uh, and we can feel like we've accomplished a lot at the end of the day. 
So we will take a break at, in the middle, uh, and we can take breaks if we need to. Um, that's the kind of thing you might mayday towards the temp check if you really feel like you need a break and that's an opportunity to get that. So, um, in terms of how this agenda works, it's now 5.30. We're doing a really good job staying on track with the agenda right now. Um, I'd like there to be about 15 minutes of work group announcements, if possible. Really trying to keep the announcements to about a minute, a minute and a half you can. And then we'll flow into the next thing. So, um, if our, I'm gonna, oh, one other thing I want to be clear about. I will very clearly open stack and then close stack once it's open and closed so we really know when we're in a stack taking period and, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to open stack to the stack keepers for work group announcements.